Welcome to our CA Football 12 Teams in 12 Days season preview. And today we take a look at the Towson Tigers. And to help us learn more about the Tigers, nobody better to turn to than the longtime voice of Towson, Stero Marikas. Hello, Stero. Rob, great to be with you, sir. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, Spiro, last spring, Towson opted out of playing the season and took advantage of, of that time to get some extra practice in uh, as we head into the fall season. How do you think that will benefit them going into this year? Well, I think, first of all, that everybody is chomping at the bit to get back on the football field and, and, and play some games starting, uh, you know, the Saturday before Labor Day. Um, I, I think for Coach Ambrose and the players, spring was a chance for them to, to gather again for the first time in a while. Um, a lot of transfers, a lot of new freshmen coming in. So some kinks to be worked out. And uh, I, I think they got a lot accomplished in the spring. Um, probably not your normal spring ball because they did not play in over a year. So I, I think Rob was very pleased with what went on during spring football this year. Well, with all those new names, let's uh, let's first start with the with, with the offense. And there's some familiar faces, especially a, a, a deep group at wide receiver with some names people would know and Caleb Smith, Jabari Allen, Darian Street, and, and a veteran group also on the offensive line. But it looks like transfers will battle for positions at quarterback and running back, especially. Kind of give us an idea of what you see from the offense. Well, quarterback is is the the position everybody wants to talk about the most, and and a familiar face to the CAA is at Towson. That's Chris Ferguson who spent a couple of years at Maine, then transferred to Liberty, Liberty and, and now is at Towson. I would think he's the front runner, but, um, you know, Vince, Vince Amendola is a transfer from North Carolina who may put some pressure on Chris Ferguson. And, and Jeff Miller out of California is now a, a redshirt junior, and he was highly recruited coming out of high school. He could also press Chris. So I think there's going to be a battle for quarterback, but, but Chris, I think, is the front runner there. Now at running back, um, you know, Kobe Young comes back. Kobe, when he has been able to play, he has suffered some injuries. He looks like he could just be a, a really dynamic running back for the Tigers. But they've got a transfer from Georgia Tech, a big kid, Jerry Howard. Um, and I know Coach Ambrose is looking forward to that. He loves big running backs. I mean, we all remember Terrence West. Terrence was not a small guy, and, and Jerry's not either. So uh, I think Coach Ambrose is looking for big things out of Jerry Howard. And you mentioned, Rob, the most important part of all that is that a veteran offensive line coming back. Cole Chiripko at center. Uh, you've also got Aaron Grubkowski, Andrew Garnett, all coming back for the Tigers on the offensive line. And if the offensive line is not gelling well, your quarterback and your running backs and your wide receiver is going to have a much tougher time. Let's take a look at the defense now. And there's a couple of standouts returning that people will know in linebacker Christian Dixon and, of course, safety S.J. Brown, who led the team in tackles, I believe, in 19. But uh, who are some of the other guys to watch and some guys that you feel will make big contributions on this unit? I think one of the biggest keys is Brandon Schumann, cornerback who was injured two years ago. He's back and healthy. And uh, I think the Tigers secondary is going to be very good with Schumann at one quarterback, cornerback position, Charles Peoples probably at the other cornerback position. And then you've got safeties, Jamal Gay and, and SJ Brown. So I think they're very solid on the back end. And the question is going to be, can they get pressure up front? Jesus Gibbs is back. He's a transfer from South Carolina, uh, Bryce Lauer. Mason Chaloa, I mean, they've, they've got guys up front. The question is, are they going to be effective? And if that happens, that makes the job easier for guys like Christian Dixon at the at the linebacker position. Let's touch a little bit on the special teams. They're always important. And, and the Tigers are going to have to replace a, you know, a, a record-setting place kicker in Aiden O'Neill, but return punter Shane McDonough and, and one of the most exciting uh, return guys in the conference in Diego Hunter. Who are some guys uh, in, the skill, in the special team skill positions that we should look at? Well, I love Diego because him and I can see eye to eye. I mean, <laughs> they list him at 5'8", Rob. I don't want to cast dispersions on anyone, but I think that's a little generous. But he is excited. Every time he touches the football, he could take it to the house. So he's an exciting guy with punt returns, kick returns. You mentioned Shane McDonough. Shane is, is certainly, um, you know, a solid punter. And I think kicker, the big shoes to fill. And I think there's going to be a competition transfer from Arizona state, um, Gabriel Gomez, but there are other guys there also. So uh, I think place kicker is going to be a battle in summer camp. As we take a look at this season, obviously, first of all, an extremely challenging schedule for the Tigers this season. But as you look at the season, what are some of the keys for them to have the kind of success that they're traditionally used to having since Rob's been there? Well, you mentioned the schedule, and, and 
you know, starting off that first Saturday before uh, Labor Day against Morgan State, Morgan in the MEAC, but, you know, this is a crosstown rivalry, and, and it's a game that, that is always tight and, and played very hard by both sides. A lot of bragging rights there. Um, the Tigers then will step into CAA play in week two to travel to New Hampshire. Everybody knows that's not exactly a picnic going up uh, to Durham to, to try to win a football game against the Wildcats. Then they come home for their first home game, and, uh, you know, I guess Rob decided to take it easy and, and bring it in North Dakota State. And correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, but I think besides their game at Delaware, this is the only other regular season game that North Dakota State has ever played east of the Mississippi. So, um, you know, the Bison are, are coming in. Uh, it'll be a rematch of the 2013 National Championship game, and, and Towson will have revenge on their minds, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of green and gold in the stands at the Johnny United Stadium that third week of the football season. Then Towson will travel out to California to take on San Diego State. Kind of interesting that it's really not in uh, in, in San Diego because the Chargers, uh, tore, that stadium has been torn down, which is where San Diego State was playing. And um, they're building an on-campus stadium that won't be ready. So the game's actually being played in, in Carson, California. So uh, the Tigers will travel out to San Diego State, then come home and it's all CAA the rest of the way. and. Every week's a battle, you know that. And 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 Coach Ambrose will tell you that there's there's nothing tougher than a CAA game, and uh, seven of them on the back end, and, and it'll be a, a just. We're all so excited that football is back, and, and just cannot wait for uh, that Saturday in September against Morgan. Thanks so much for taking time and breaking down the Tigers for us, and we look forward to your coverage throughout the season and catching up as as we go through the fall. Thank you, Rob. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much. All right, thanks.